Hi everybody, Mike with Enviroscape LA. So we're here on our next project, our latest project here in Redondo Beach. And in back of me, there's way in the back, we're two, we're two blocks away from the beach, if you can believe this, in Redondo Beach. Um, we're excited about this project because it's a native garden. And the reason you wanna use natives is because natives bring pollinators in and they actually feed the pollinators. The pollinators are the birds, the insects, the butterflies, the bees. Uh, these plants will really help those little guys because mankind is on top of the food chain, but we're part of a chain. And a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And so if we don't help those little guys, if they die, they take us with them. So that's the big takeaway is you got to plant natives. Now, um, I'm not saying everything has to be native and there's a few plants that in this landscape I, I would say 95% is, is native. Um, take for example these, uh, this is the uh, Catalina fuchsia. Uh, that has very very local to our area of California. Uh, this is a Cenothus. In fact, if you notice the uh, drip irrigation tubing, we don't have it on both sides of it for the simple reason that if you give it too much water, it actually starts turning brown. It says, hey, uh, I don't like you. I'm going to turn brown. I'm going to die if you if you give it too much water. So that's why we have the drip tubing away from it. This is a California native. If you are into birding and you want to bring the birds into your yard, this is called the toyon or otherwise uh, heteromeles are beautifolia. Remember it's toyon. It's simpler. These are bougainvilleas. These are real natives. In fact, these are the only two things that survive. Um, there's been a remodel construction going on the last two years. They put a second story here, totally destroyed everything uh, landscape wise, but they're native indigenous. The, one of the few things we put that we didn't, ha that is not a native, it's this uh, California friendly plant. So if it's not native, at least it's a California friendly. This gets these big red flowers. Uh, they look like red sea urchins. It's one of the best plants that's a non-native that you can use, a Caliandra hemispilo, otherwise known as the pink powder puff plant. Uh, the, I, the reason for this, reason we use a native, the natives will, they won't give you much screen. What we wanted here was a screen from the neighbor over here because it's uh, a, kind of an abandoned house or it's, it's for sale. So nothing, nobody's been, been here for a while. So we want to screen that out. So this will actually grow two stories high and you don't need a big trellis with it. You just keep trimming it back. Um, all the rock work that's here, uh, that California sage, uh, the rock work here is because we have a, uh, we're keeping all the rainwater that lands on the roof on the house, we're keeping that on site and we're piping it here under the ground so next time it rains we'll be able to come out here and this whole thing will be like a big pond that'll short, you know, that'll, that is, uh, it'll be like a pond until it has the groundwater uh, swallows it up so it's better to on site instead of going to the ocean because if it goes to the ocean before it gets there it picks up the motor oil and the herbicides and pesticides all the bad stuff and it throws it in the ocean so we want it here so that the microbes in the soil can reduce the toxic uh, elements um, now what if we have gone, gone, going on over here we have uh, we just cleaned out this drip irrigation. The reason we're using drip irrigation on this is because, um, number one, drip irrigation doesn't waste any water. It only goes to where you want. There's an emitter every 12 inches, and that emitter has a little strip of copper that prevents root intrusion. The reason we like Rainbird is because they're the only ones that put the copper uh, to prevent root intrusion. They're first to market that. Number two, it's recycled plastic. Doesn't get any and then notice the uh, little walkway we have going through here. Just, if you're gonna do a regenerative garden or sustainable garden, you wanna make sure that it has this curb appeal. It has the wow factor, it just pops. We could have just put a bunch of rocks here and walked away, but that's no fun. That you've gotta have buy-in and, and you know, it's, it's like buying a Prius. It's one of the ugliest cars but it's one of the ugliest cars that there's ever been, but it saves energy, saves gas. The problem is that it just doesn't look pretty. Well, the trick is you want to put a landscape in that 
has natives, but you got to create the wow factor. And so we think this this is really we've done a really good, excellent. Um, again, this is a native pollinator garden, and um, put a little like we found we were able to find this big stone, so we put it gives the illusion of a bridge. And we actually have some drainage pipe underneath here, so that when it does rain and this gets filled up, it'll be able to come over here. Um, over here, we actually have a pollinator fountain because one of the hardest things to find in nature, one of the hardest things to find is water, fresh water, and this is oxygenated water because it's always turning. So that's a little pollinator fountain just for the pollinators, the birds and the butterflies. Um, and uh, we've got the drip irrigation going. Uh, this is the homeowner, Carl. Carl. Hey, man, well, thank yeah. you so much, Mike, <laughs> okay. for all you and your crew have done. Carl, can you just tell us a little bit about why this is important? Why, I mean, you're, you're, you're actually taking this to the next level. Nobody's really doing this yet. It's well, this, is, this has been my life's dream. So I finally get in a position in my life where I could build an environmentally sensitive house, solar panels, rainwater, garden native plants this is my dream and mike's helped me with his crew make all this come come true so now you go camping in the sierras i go hiking in the sierras i go hiking in local mountains i see streams just like this it looks exactly the same of many streams i've crossed you know so it's an incredible example of what can be done in our own front yards yeah oh uh, i was talking to carl this morning about how you know in the rainforest they're for agriculture they're hacking and slashing trees uh because they feel like what else can we do it's either that or we starve uh other parts of the world uh other nations uh there it's hot and dry climate uh they're burning a lot of wood it's adding to the greenhouse effect and i was saying carl rather than you know, I, I can't stop though. I'm not, I, I don't have the, the wherewithal to go to South America and tell these, these guys who are hacking and slashing trees, stop it. I don't have, uh, I don't own an airplane to go to, to Africa and say, hey, stop burning the wood. I don't, I doubt that they would do it anyway. So the thing, so I don't concentrate, we, what we as a society shouldn't concentrate on what we can do. What we need to do is concentrate on what we can exactly. do. Exactly. That's a life model. Yes. Right there. We gotta yeah. all do that. Proximity is power. And I I don't have control over what happens over there, but I do have control over what I can do here. And so, you know, it's gratifying when you can team up with a homeowner who really is sensitive about the environment. So uh, thanks for joining us. Hopefully you've learned something. You want more information, give us uh, check out our website at Viruscape LA. This is Mike from Viruscape LA signing off. When you think sustainability, think permaculture thing in Viruscape. Don't, don't close off yet. So 310 Avenue D if you want to come by and see what you can do. Redondo Beach. Redondo Beach. Okay, thanks for joining us. God bless.